Hey guys, welcome to my latest settlement showcase. Be warned, this is going to be a long video of 42 minutes because there's just so much to show at Sunshine Tidings. This stinker town will feature two factories and towards the end a small fireworks demonstration. Feel free to skip parts of this leisurely stroll. Sunshine has the largest collection of power armor suits because these people just love everything mechanical. They figured out their own way to purify water. Since this settlement doesn't extend to the lake, I roll Life play that they haul the water up the hill to purify it later. Hey. Hi, how are you? Well enough. The settlers repair, improve and make their own armors and weapons, and then sell them. This is Berta, a former boss knight who yes. left the Brotherhood Hi. over disagreement on the benefit of mm -hmm. technology to all the Commonwealth. Now she and Sissy Sam are fixing and selling energy weapons and armor to the common people so they can defend themselves better. I roleplay that the courier of New Vegas has made it to Sunshine and brought Yes Man along. I was programmed to be helpful and answer any questions I was. I know Fallout 4 is set four years prior to New Vegas, but I'm in the post game now and I'll just pretend it's five years later. And the courier moved on, being restless in nature. Time to hit the road. This is not the original Professor Goodfields. Mine died, but recently a wonderful mod was released that adds custom voices to the robot workbench, so I just recreated him. Pretty neat. Sunshine is self-sufficient, so they also do a bit of farming besides trading. If you pay attention, I put in a lot of wild plants that can be harvested as well. Wild potato flowers, hop flowers, carrot flowers, thistles. I wanted to preserve this somewhat wild, untamed feel of the settlement. So instead of putting up a greenhouse and eat plots, I had them plant crops on this natural lovely terrace and into old tires. Everything that grew when they arrived, they left untouched. Most of these settlers are scavengers. They need a lot of junk to tinker with and make new things. For whatever reason, all six junkyard dogs have come together at the bar. <laughs> it's hilarious. I think putting down dog adorugs are the source of it. I put them all over the settlement though. I don't know what to say. But hey, I won't complain. Maybe they'll start playing poker. I put up better wave emitters everywhere and this seems to have fixed the problem of settlers shooting the pet mole rats. This is Lucifer, the little suicide bomber. You're lucky I have a soft spot for dumb animals. I wanted to have two but it's more difficult than you think to catch one that has mines on its back. I had to kill the regular ones. Not sure a working fireplace and that particular morad are a good combination, but okay, uh, not my problem. What a rat hole. I thought those turbine windmills would fit my tinker town. It's so far the only settlement where I put these highly inefficient things up.
this is my very simple, very short fireworks contraption. I'll show it later. Crazy Dave was with the Adam Cats for a while before getting bored and settling here. Yes, this is a male mannequin wearing a dress. A dress Dave will actually put on and then visit the bar. Just for fun. He's not transgender or anything. He's just a goofy guy. Twitchy Gina has a bit of a sugar problem. She loves Nuka Cola, guns, and women. My settlers hold a preservation chamber to this place and fix it up. It's fully functional in game too, and will actually cure radiation. Install that wastelet if you want one too. This is a radiation detector that makes the siren go off when a red storm approaches. I'll show it in action later. Sunshine is an open doors trading hub that welcomes anybody passing through to stop for a while and shop and have a good time. Right now, Doug, what is this here? Welcome. Hey. Hey, at least it's honest work. Really? Doc Weathers is guaranteed to patch up any bruises, holes, and diseases you've picked up. Dude in a red coat is Crazy Dave, by the way. My settlers have a nice gym they even use. Might be seen doing push-ups too. And switch into a clear day now. Ah, that's better. One of the two entrance guard towers. I have three human guards and a robot guard. The Tooth Fairy is male. Nobody knows his real name. I'll let you decide who of the settlers it might be. He got that nickname when he was young, making money and knocking others out in fistfights. One of the two factories. I can tell you it was a pain in the neck making conveyor belts fit into so small a warehouse. Ain't looking for trouble, I hope. Easy. I'm not looking for trouble. That's Gina. She's supposed to be doing every pair animation, but mostly just stands around like an seen idiot. It. We cut those raiders to pieces. I doubt they'll be back. No, probably not.
This is the armory. It's very well stocked. All the weapons on display are legendary, by the way. These people collect a lot of stuff and then just dump it somewhere. This area in the back is where the guards sleep. Maybe Katie is the courier who goes by a different name now. Maybe. Ibot Eric wears an actual Ibot helmet and carries a missile launcher on his shoulder. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Finley never learned to properly spell. Or maybe I didn't notice the typo when I put up the names. Go with whatever version you prefer. This is the biggest building that houses a big modern kitchen and a bunch of bedrooms, mostly for the farmers. Wow! That is amazing! Charmer is a male scavenger. What can I do Max for you is his today? best friend. They grew up together and have always had each other's backs. Their parents died long ago. Carrie is a sweet, simple woman who still has the toys of her dead son on the shelves. Wondering why Yona sleepwalks. But the dogs make sure she doesn't leave the settlement and get herself killed. This is Charmer having breakfast.
This is the barbecue party deck. These are working vending machines that accept pre-war money and caps. The cigarette machine too. So now there is an actual use for all the pre-war money you find. Not all buildings are connected by bridges, but some are for turret and generator maintenance purposes. The Buffett sisters idolized the Minutemen ever since they were safe from super mutants back when they were nomadic scavengers. So when the Minutemen offered them a place to stay at one of their settlements, they accepted. Hey. Answer any questions I was asked. This is the mole red pen. My settlers feed them ferals. They get hey. trained like attack dogs. Since no NPC can be fenced in, you have to imagine they live there. That's Cornflower Carry. This is Tinkerbell, a runaway synth. She arrived with another synth named Peter. I put synth components into the inventories. Ah, I forgot to show you that. But yeah, I think about the smallest details, even those nobody will ever see. So. If you ain't been up to see Grey Garden, you should go. Whole place is run by robots. Uh huh. The shop girls sleep right behind their shops, but they still get lost trying to find their shop in the morning. Huh? What? Um, I'll show you the running factory later. Out here, you gotta take things one day at a time. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, now Twitchy Gene is actually working. You should have seen it. We cut those raiders to pieces. I doubt they'll be back. No, probably not. Finley and Travis at work. Finley wanted yeah. to join the Minuteman, but he's such a bad shot and short-sighted that they asked hey him to do oh. some recruitment work on shop customers at one of the settlements. And oh, then he ended what? up in Sunshine, a place where people who never belonged anywhere before and now have found a new family. They are all fiercely loyal to each other and are willing to die for this place.
This is Max who decided to take her workbench animation to the storage shelf, it seems. Go ahead. Lenny is the blonde haired scavenger with a backpack. He often leaves the settlement for weeks. He seems to be searching for something but never said what. Another day of hard work never changes. Life can be harsh. This is the other synth who lost his hand during his escape uh, from the Institute. Yes, Corsair right. shot them off. At Sunshine they fixed him up with spare parts. Nori gifted them Kellogg's outfit for unknown reasons. Careful out there. Tinkerbell and Peter Pan have childlike personalities. They chose not to have their minds wiped. The other settlers know they are since too. In the Institute, they were obsessed with this one book they found. They identified with the characters living in a secret land nobody else can reach. A place where they don't change. Yet it wasn't a fun place but a prison. So they flew away to the real world. Lily is a farmer who also runs a tiny toy shop from her shack for a few caps on the side. The scavenger saddlers supply her with toys they find and she fixes them up. The doctor is a goo woman who goes by the affectionate nickname Doc Ratsmile. Everybody loves her. Sunshine Tidings was founded by two brothers who owe their lives to Polly. She was a traveling doctor who offered her services to anybody in need. One day on the road, a badly burned young man limped towards her. He begged her to save his twin brother who was bleeding out in a ditch. A group of raiders had left them for dead. A group of pharaohs was nearly upon them to finish the job. So Polly fought them off, almost getting herself killed too, saved the brothers and brought them to abandoned sunshine tidings nearby where they healed up. The brother who almost bled out was in awe of Polly and wanted to marry her and take care of her out of gratitude. But Polly was in her fifties when the bombs fell and they became more like sons to her. Together they founded Sunshine as a place for the weary, abused or plain weird ones. The burnt brother is Eric who wears the eyebot helmet to hide his scarred face. The settlement has two Brahmin who either graze here or next to the mole red pen. Being close to the lake, the settlers like to go fishing. A 
Our solar panel powers the security gate of the private side entrance. I don't know what to say. Wayne is Ibot Eric's twin brother. Explosives are his passion. If anybody visiting Sunshine says but one bad word about ghouls, they receive a beating and get chased off, warned never to return or be shot on sight. I'm starting to think we're finally safe from those damn raiders. No. Critter Crawford is a bit of a weirdo. His hobby is taxidermy, obviously. He looks a bit creepy, but the community has decided that he's harmless, mostly. Alright, let's fire up the factory production I built many months ago. You should have seen it. We cut those raiders to pieces. I doubt they'll be back. No, probably not. I forgot what is being manufactured. Ah, ammo. Okay. I think the other one's not active. Maybe missing components. The fusion generator powers the factory. If it were running, it would transport stuff up here too, along this side. Raiders thought we were easy pickings. We showed them different. There's not a raider alive who troubles me. Now I'm going to show you the other one that houses the fireworks production alongside combat armor parts and flamers. We're going to produce silver, green, and pink. 
but as you will see you can only launch one color at a time out of the cannons unless one color runs out first. I have only two cannons so the fireworks presentation will have two colors at first but then launch the third one at the end. Even with the wooden makeshift rails, bulky heavy guns will get jammed. Nice. Let's take them out of storage. I put the fireworks cannons on Crazy Dad's shack roof. It's uh, a bit tricky to get the anger right so I can transfer the mortar. Having the fireworks in the miscellaneous tab is quite annoying when it's cluttered like mine. Now I'm going to activate this very simple contraption. Ta-da! And before anybody asks if this is a sneaky way to promote Nazi glory with that ladder placement, I didn't realize it until it was too late. The contraption is set so that a metal ball activates the switch permanently. The other one, the, the pulse switch, will not keep the fireworks going. So now the cannons will shoot until all the mortar is used up. In order to reset the ball track, I need to run another ball through it. My initial dream was to build a massive ball track, spanning the entire settlement, running over all the roofs. But it needs downward momentum, so that was impossible without using the conveyor belts to get the ball up again. And that would have looked terribly bulky, so I scrapped the idea. All my settlers, the robots, and even the morads seem to be gem freaks. The settlement is fairly well lit, but all the lights, 28 settlers, plus the animals in such a big place murdered my frame rate. I get between 20 and 27 frames.
I'll show you the radiation detector in action briefly now. I did manage to get footage of its automatic activation, sadly, but in any case, the siren will trigger before you even notice the red storm is coming. The siren has the same effect as the regular alarm, so instead of seeking shelter, settlers will actually run towards it with drawn weapons. Sunshine Tidings has 28 human residents, well, two are sims, so humanoid I guess, three robots, six dogs, two brahmin, and a morad. My tinkerers have the highest power consumption of all my settlements, it's 344. High defense of 309, but get attacked constantly. They are a pretty happy bunch, 84% satisfied with their lives, not bad. The dogs used to patrol around the junk wall until they grew lazy and retired to the bar. We could really use your help. I spent many weeks building the settlement, adding new stuff from the mods. Oops, I see the idle markers are visible. How did that happen? Once again, thanks so much for watching. If you made it through the whole thing, I'm impressed. I hope it wasn't too tedious. My next video will probably feature my revamped Bunker Hill. Might take a few weeks though, I just bought Far Cry 5 and co-op mode is just too funny, so I'll be spending a lot of time playing that game.